Hello everyone! Welcome to a new episode of the Knitted by Whitney podcast. I'm going to apologize right now because the audio quality of this might not be as good as my other podcasts because as you might be able to tell, I'm outside! And I just had to come outside because today is the first day of spring and despite the winter we've been having where we've been having snow pretty much every weekend, there's no snow! The ground looks terrible because it's all brown and yellow and dead from being under snow all winter, but it is actually a beautiful day here in Nova Scotia. And you might be able to hear lots of noise in the background, such as cars going by because I do live on a busy road or sounds of people doing yard work. So I do apologize for that. If it is loud, I will pause what I'm saying and I will wait until the noise has passed. Um, hopefully I can get this done without too many interruptions, but we'll wait and see. Um, but like I said, it's the first day of spring and it's beautiful weather here. The temperature's really nice and I just had to be outside. So my fiance helped me drag my beautiful vintage chair out into the backyard so that I could still have most of my setup here for you. And because it is the first day of spring, and I'm on my patio. I do have a mug of the episode, but I will not be drinking out of that mug because I'm gonna crack open a beer instead. I'm a beer drinker, and to me, patio season is beer season. So I am drinking a new kind to me. We have a new local brewery close to us, and this is their BYOB. It is a light beer with a citrus hint, so. Instead of cheersing you with a mug, I'm going to cheers you with a beer. Cheers! That's what I'm talking about with the car noises. I do apologize. And that is a refreshing beer. I really like that. Um, but I did happen to bring a mug out with me just to sort of keep the theme of having the mug of the episode. You might be able to spot it over here. We added a new mug to our collection. We spotted this the other day when we were out shopping. We got a Schitt's Creek mug that says, ew, David. And on the other side, it says Schitt's Creek. So I brought that out just to sort of have it in the video. So I'm still keeping my regular bit, even though I'm having a beer instead. So another reason why I am drinking a beer this episode is because we have something to celebrate. I am going to be announcing the giveaway winner today. But just to remind everybody, in my last episode, which was the one about my um, Knitted Augustine's number 21 dress, I announced that thanks to the very generous Laura of Penrose Knits, I'm going to be giving away one digital copy of her school run headband, which is this, and a skein of Fleece Artist Front Country DK in the color Nova Scotia, which is exactly the kind of yarn you need to make the school run headband. And this is plenty of yarn to make it. It's actually more than you need for the pattern. And of course you are under no obligation to use the yarn to make the pattern, but I am giving away both of these items to the winner. And without further ado, the giveaway winner is Randy Marathu. Congratulations, Randy, you have won a copy of the School Run Headband and the skein of yarn. Also, I do hope I pronounced your last name properly. I'm not entirely sure, but Randy, congratulations. If you want to claim your prize, please send me an email to knittedbywhitney at gmail.com. I will put that below right here, as well as in the description below and send me an email with your full address and I will get both the pattern to you and the skein of yarn. So like I mentioned, it's a digital, digital copy of the pattern. So you'll get that pretty quickly, but the yarn I have to mail to you and depending on where you live, it might take a while, but be patient, it will come to you. So congratulations again. I'm so happy to be doing my first ever giveaway and I hope everyone was just as excited about it as I was. It really, really warmed my heart to read all your lovely comments on my last video. 
a lot of you had some very wonderful things to say about the dress and a lot of you were very surprised at how quickly it knit up, how lovely it looked on somebody who was plus size and I think I inspired a lot of you to make it so I'm very very excited about that. I hope you do. It was actually a really fun pattern to make and like I mentioned really quick. And now I hope you all are here for more than just hearing who won the giveaway. You're also here because I'm going to talk about my most recent finished item. If you can't guess it already, it's what I'm wearing. I am wearing my newly finished test knit of Laura Penrose's souffle tee. I first saw the test call for this pattern on Laura's Instagram back in January, but I had seen her sort of teasing the pattern a little bit before that. Um, but I was very intrigued by it because I knew that one of my goals for 2022, I guess you can hear crows and roosters too, so I do apologize about that. Um, there's the rooster now. <laughs> and it's not my rooster. <laughs> my rooster goes woof woof. Um, I was very excited to test knit this garment for Laura because like I mentioned in my what I want to knit in 2022 episode, I have been wanting to focus on items that I can wear to work and a knitted blouse, short sleeve, was exactly what I was looking for. I also knew that I had exactly the right amount of yarn in my stash. This yarn is Knit Picks Alpaca Cloud Lace in the color Darcy, which is a navy color. But unfortunately, this color is discontinued. However, they have a similar color still available called Edgar, and there is a slightly bluer color named Francis. So if you want this same color, unfortunately, this one's no longer available, but those are the closest options right now. I am absolutely thrilled with how this pattern turned out. It was the best testing experience I have ever had because I have mentioned on here before that I'm not the biggest fan of doing test knits because I usually don't have good experiences with them. However, I really trusted Laura to create a really welcoming testing experience and to you know, just offer a really good experience of test knitting her garment. Um, I was also very pleased to see that Laura had staggered deadlines depending on what size you were making and what sleeve length you were making. There are two versions to this pattern. There is the short sleeve version, which I have made, and a lovely long sleeve version. I'll put a picture here so you can see what that looks like. And it is knit entirely in lace weight mohair, which you know from what I've said on this podcast before, I'm not the biggest fan of mohair. So I chose to knit mine in lace weight alpaca. Now, luckily, you're only using one strand of the lace weight for just the yoke. After that, you get to hold two strands together, and it's not that bad. It's about the, the same as the fingering weight. So it doesn't feel as thread like shall we say. Um, I absolutely love this this design. I think it's so clever. Laura made some really interesting choices of how to do certain things and I just think it's so clever. It's not something that I would have thought about but everything made sense. Everything had a purpose and her instructions were super clear, very easy to follow. Um, of course, we had a lot of back and forth in the chat about how to make things better. So when the pattern is released, which no release date has been set yet, but hopefully it'll be by the end of March, maybe early April, depends on how things work out with the rest of the sizes that still need to finish up and get their feedback into Laura. But it is such a lovely knit and I'm so, so happy with how it turned out. I think it's absolutely beautiful. It has all kinds of beautiful little details. Let me start to show some of them off to you. There is a beautiful I-cord edging right along here. There is the sheer section of the yoke, this adorable little ruffle, and these beautiful little puff sleeves. So I mentioned in my Augustine's 21 sweater dress episode that 
because of my very broad shoulders, I'm not a fan of very big poofy sleeves. I like more of a subtle poof. This sleeve is the perfect amount of poof for my comfort level. And it tapers down to this really nice little cuff, which if you choose to knit the pattern, you'll find out is very customizable. What I love the most about this garment is that Laura put in so much work to make sure that it fits everybody as perfectly as it can. There is a range of 10 sizes in this pattern, 10. That is amazing. I'm so, so happy to see that. And from all of us in the test group that made this pattern, even though we range from very small busts up to quite large busts, it fits all of us perfectly. And it looks beautiful on everybody. We all chose different colors. Some of us chose different types of yarn. Some of us did short sleeve, some of us did long sleeve. It looks beautiful on everybody. And it's such a lovely pattern and it is just amazing. Even if I hadn't tested this garment, I definitely would be buying the pattern because it's definitely a staple piece to your wardrobe. I've said that I'm gonna wear this a lot to work. I actually took it for a test drive on Friday, which is when I learned a couple things about it, which I will chat about. Um, but overall, it is such a beautiful garment. Oh, I forgot to mention it is a bit of a crop style. I'll put a picture here so you can see it when I'm standing up so you get a better idea of what it looks like on me. And I'll show you a picture of the back of it as well because it has this beautiful little keyhole detail. I love it. It's adorable. This is the perfect amount of ruffle to suit everybody. I know I've tested and knitted patterns in the past that have had quite large ruffles and I find they really don't suit me. But this little bit of ruffle is just a little cheeky and it's really feminine without being like overtly, here's a big dramatic ruffle that's gonna take over your whole look. So I really love that aspect of it. And it's a nice little division between when you're working with one strand versus when you change over to knitting with two strands. I'm going to be doing so much editing this video. So one of the things that I really need to talk about with this project is my yarn choice because I feel like this project is an example of where you have a good idea for a yarn, but it's really not the best in practice. I am not a fan of mohair, as I've talked about before. So I had in my stash a really great mohair substitute, which is alpaca lace. And it's just as soft as mohair. It's just as fluffy as mohair. It gives me the same gauge and it all, it worked out great on that end of things. What I didn't know until I took this top for a test drive on Friday is that alpaca is really hot. And I wasn't even moving around a lot at work, but I was sweating. So that is something that I need to think about now that I have finished this garment and I'm wearing it out into the world. So it might not be something that I wear in spring and summer. It might only be a fall, winter, top that I can wear when I want to be nice and cozy when I'm out at work or if I choose to wear it for a nice date night or something like that. I have all kinds of ideas about how I'm going to style this top and I'm very excited to see how they all turn out. Something else that I learned the first time I wore this top is that the fuzz from the yarn likes to stick to my underarms. That was kind of fun to learn. I was going to the gym after work on Friday and when I went to raise my arms I realized I had fuzzy navy armpits and I was not about to go to the gym like that so um, I was able to get it off before the gym but it was it was funny it was funny at the time um, so now I realize that whenever I wear this um, I should be coming home and just having a shower right afterwards. I shouldn't be going anywhere else afterwards where I need to change. Um, and also I love alpaca. It's super, super soft, but this top has pilled on the very first day that I've worn it. There's already some pilling happening underneath the armpits. And I did know already that alpaca pills very, very quickly because it is such a soft yarn. Generally speaking, the softer your yarn, the more likely it is to pill. Anything that's like really tightly 
twisted or um, any like specifically anti-pilling yarn will be a much better bet for avoiding pilling, but not with super soft yarns like the alpaca. So that's unfortunate, but I did know that going in. <clears throat> Seriously. So thanks to my yarn choice, I now know for sure that I'm definitely gonna make this pattern again because I want to make this pattern out of a, out of a material that is going to be better for warm weather because this is definitely a style that I want to wear again and again. It's beautiful for my high-waisted skirts because it is the perfect length crop top and it just, it looks super great for work. It's very stylish. It's very versatile. So I definitely want one to wear when it's hot out. So that might be on my list of things to make this spring slash summer because I have some beautiful 100% tensile yarn, which is a fiber that's derived from wood pulp. And I just think it's gonna be beautiful. Now it is a very different style of yarn. It's got a lot of sheen to it. There's no fluff to it. So it's definitely gonna produce a very different looking garment, but I think it's still gonna be really, really nice. Somebody in the test group is using 100% silk yarn. So I'm waiting to see how hers turns out before I decide if I'm gonna use the tensile or not. Because, you know, I don't wanna make it if I know it's not gonna turn out because someone else used a very similar behaving fiber and it looks not what I expect it to look like. I think it's still gonna be beautiful because she chose a dark green color and it's just lovely. So that is my, what feels a little bit like a higgledy piggledy review of this pattern because I've had to pause so much for all the road noise. Um, but I just wanna reiterate, absolutely beautiful pattern, very well written, clear and easy to follow instructions. My yarn choice was not the best, but it is finished now and I think I will still be able to get a lot of wear out of this during the colder times and I am most likely going to be knitting another one because I'm going to need this in a warm weather friendly fiber. So let's move on to my book reviews of the episode. I did say book reviews. I have a couple because just this morning I finished The High Mountain Court, which I was talking about during my last podcast episode. Um, when I did that episode, I was only about 100 pages into the book and I was really liking it. But now that I finished it, I can confirm I loved this book. I thought it was really, really well written. It had excellent characters. Even the smaller side characters had important roles to play. And I loved that the author, A.K. Mulford, gave a lot of um, attention to them. And there was a lot of attention to detail throughout so that someone that you thought was only a passing character in one chapter ends up having a more important role later on in the book. And it was really nice to see all of those things coming together. It was really, really cool. I really appreciated that. Because I'm a character fan whenever I'm reading. I always look for great characters. That's what draws me into a book. Um, I also loved it because the story is sort of like a cross between Akatar and Serpent and Dove. Absolutely loved this book. Really good. Highly recommend. It's the first in a trilogy and I have, as of this morning, ordered the second book. Can't wait to get it and continue reading the series. But the third book does not release until April 26th. So I have to wait a little while for that one. And so far it looks like it might only be available on Kindle, which I'm not the biggest fan of reading on an e-reader or on a phone or something like that. I like to read physical books. That's my preferred way of reading. I don't really enjoy reading off of a screen because I look at a screen all day with work. I'm looking at a computer screen and then when I'm not working and sometimes when I'm working, I'm also looking at my phone a lot. I really don't want to then look at a screen to read my book. I prefer to hold a physical book. I'm also not a big fan of audiobooks. I find for me the narration is just like white noise to me because I can't pay enough attention while I'm working on a task and I don't find it engaging enough when I'm not doing anything 
to listen to the story. So I have done it before. Um, I had a job before where I did a lot of driving and I liked listening to audiobooks then because concentrating on the road was enough that it kept my attention enough that I was able to listen to the story. There were still times where I missed pieces of the story, but I picked audiobooks that were generally quite simple. So it wasn't the worst if I missed a couple lines of dialogue or if I missed like half a, half like a page or something. So it wasn't too bad of a deal. But circling back, I recommend The High Mountain Court. Really love this book. My second book review it's probably going to surprise nobody that I'm reviewing this book. Uh, this book came out in February, I think it was. I think it came, yes, it did. It came out um, shortly after Valentine's Day because Doyle gave me money to chapters to buy this book so that I could get it after Valentine's Day. Um, I, of course, am talking about the new Sarah Moss book, the Crescent City series number two, which is House of Sky and Breath. And look at this baby, like this is 800 pages. It was a lot, but I was trying to plow through it as quickly as possible because I follow a lot of people on Instagram who are also fans of Sarah J Maas. And I was just petrified of being spoiled because her books are so, like even the ones that I don't really love, the Crescent City series, there's still enough happening in them that I don't want to find out what happens before I read the book myself. And I'm so glad I wasn't spoiled for this book. I was sort of spoiled because somebody said something online that was vague, but not quite vague enough to not tell me that something was happening. And I'm not going to tell you anything that would give anything away about this book because I would hate to spoil it for somebody else. It's a brand new enough book that not everybody would have read it by now, or if they've already got it, they might not have finished it. So I don't want to tell you anything that might give it away. But I will say, I liked it better than the first Crescent City book, which was The House of Earth and Blood. And the reason I liked it better is because I liked the characters a little bit more. Because there were some new characters that came in, or you learned more about some of the already existing characters. I still don't like Hunt and Bryce all that much. I apologize if you love them. But they're just not my cup of tea. Didn't particularly like some of the scenes in this book, but again, it just wasn't my cup of tea. It could be somebody else's. Um, and similar to the first book, there's still a lot of info dumping. This is a much slower series. There's a lot of information. I think it's just because she's building the world so quickly and you need to know so much about it in order to tell the story properly but it just felt like there were too many threads that she was trying to keep track of and it was just overwhelming to just have so many characters dealing with the same things or related things that you're sort of hearing a lot of information through several different characters and it was just a drag honestly for me personally but again someone else may have a different opinion it doesn't mean that I like Sarah J Moss's books any less. Um, and I do, I, I know I'm gonna continue reading this series, but I can't tell you why because that would spoil something. But I am very excited to see what book three is going to be like. So I will leave you with that. I know it sounds very mysterious, but I will say the 800 pages were worth it in the end. I'm very excited to see what's going to come next. And I know I should have done this earlier, but I'm doing this a little bit out of order because I kind of forgot. I'm going to give you the update on my habitation throw. It's not much of an update, which I guess is why I didn't really think of it until now because I saw the bag sitting right there. So I only have about an inch of the third color which means that I'm behind because that was the first of the February colors and we're now more than halfway through March. So I have four colors to catch up on now, which is not ideal. 
I didn't think that I would get this far behind this early, but um, the test knit took up a lot of my knitting time. It took me almost the entire length of time that Laura gave for my size and short sleeves. Very, very happy that I was able to get it done on time, um, but it was at the cost of not working on my habitation throw at all, which is unfortunate, but um, that's what I knew I was doing when I signed on for the test knit. And as I mentioned before, I had an absolutely wonderful time doing the test knit for Laura and might not sign up for a test knit for a little while because I have some very important things that I need to get knitting on this year. My Akatar yarn for Doyle's engagement sweater has shipped, so that's gonna be coming soon. It's not gonna be the next thing that I work on because I still need to knit a baby cardigan for some friends of ours who had a baby back in February. Um, I really couldn't whack out that pattern to give to them the first time we saw the baby because I was in the middle of working on this project and this took priority. So I did tell them that a baby cardigan was on the way, so I would like to get that knitted up so that I can gift it to them and they can dress their baby up in some beautiful heirloom knitwear. Um, so that's about it for today. I really hope that there weren't too many noise interruptions. I'll be doing my best to edit those out um, as much as I can. I did my best to pause whenever it was quite noisy. So this might look like a very choppy video. And again, I do apologize about that, but first day of spring had to be outside and I had to have a patio beer. So let's finish it off with another cheers. Thank you so much for joining me if you are new and if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. I hope you all have a wonderful first day of spring and there's nothing else to say except Everyone take care. Cheers.